learned yesterday from KJ Hamler that he's taking a break from football due to a heart condition. The Broncos wide receiver posting on Instagram saying doctors had diagnosed him with pericarditis. So the Broncos in a procedural move have waived him. He's free to do what he wants to do right now. But we want to find out more about what pericarditis is. So Dr. Paul Coley, who is of course a cardiologist, joins us now. So what is it and how do you get it? A pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium, which is the sac around the heart. And if you think about what that sac does, it kind of lubricates the heart as it's beating. And there are a number of different ways you can get it. It's essentially inflammation for nonspecific reasons. Most common cause here in the United States is a post-viral. So you get a virus, you get a cold, and then the immune system kind of cross-reacts with your pericardium, creates inflammation. And every time that heart beats, that inflammation causes chest discomfort. So we've been asking, like, how in the world he discovered this. And, and you said, what, he had a torn pec at some point? Well, it may or may not or be something, related, but you think of from the region but, like, anyway. You wonder, like, how do you find it out? You must run tests. You yes. have to go to yes. somebody like you to so find out. So the first out. sign is chest discomfort. And usually that chest discomfort is positional. So not like a classic heart attack, but it's better in certain positions, worse if in certain Oh, positions. so like if you're sleeping yes. or... because if you think about what happens to your heart, which is dangling in your chest, it kind of moves differently depending on your body position. Oh, wait a minute, your heart dangles? Yeah. I know, I didn't know that either. It dangles off your aorta, which and is... And so it blood moves blood. when you move? Right. I had no idea. That's why some people say they feel palpitations more on the left side. When they lie down, they feel their heart beating more on the left side. So your heart kind of shifts. I'm gonna in hold your it. Chest. I don't like it dangling <laughs> like that. Just. <laughs> No idea so either, but now it's, okay. like, it's a nice secure. But anyhow, when it beats, it can cause basically inflammation. And then you take a deep breath, it can cause inflammation. And you know, besides viruses, yeah. other things can do it as well. Heart attacks, heart surgeries, other kinds of infections, bacterial infections, even cancer can cause pericarditis. Well, he talked about coming back. The Broncos have even talked about the possibility of bringing him back. So how do you treat it, and mm -hmm. is it something you, you can treat and, and return to normal activity? You can treat it. In fact, early diagnosis is a key to treating it, because you want to make sure you get the blood test, get the EKG, the echo, maybe the MRI, get a diagnosis, and get them on those anti-inflammatories as quickly as you can. We try not to use steroids in the first round, because that actually increases the chance that it's going to recur in a worse way. Would later. that also affect him, because the league obviously has rules about performance-enhancing drugs, which many steroids would certainly fall into? Well, these are steroids that turn off your immune system. So they're a little different wow. than the other types of steroids that athletes can abuse. But importantly, Tom, to your point, exercise restrictions are one of the, the mainstays of therapies for pericarditis. So you can't do anything? You, you, yes, you want to rest the heart because the, the more you exercise, the theory is that the heart beats harder and faster, rubs against that sac more, mm -hmm. causes more inflammation. So usually people have to rest for one to three months after this until complete resolution of symptoms. And even then, it's a very slow, gradual return to exercise. And is there a long-term worry or concern for somebody like him? So many people will have recurrent pericarditis and that can be debilitating. Wow. And so even after that first episode sort of settles, you either get the immune system kind of freaking out in a recurrent fashion, or you can even get scarring of that sac around the heart, which mm. can affect your ability to exercise. And that's called constrictive pericarditis. It constri constricts the heart. So, you know, having this in an athlete, having it in anyone is a challenge, but having it in someone who's a professional athlete is a particular challenge, both for his short term and his long term prognosis, as well as his career. Well, we hope he's doing well, of course, and uh, the rest of us are going to try to sleep at night knowing our hearts just dangling there. <laughs> like the sword of Damocles, just, just hanging there. Usually you bring good news. They got me all wired. Uh, <laughs> I thank might you. need a good cardiologist. I'm thinking of wind Tom, chimes or something. I need a I psychologist don't know. is what I might need. Uh, Dr. Coley, it's always good to see <laughs> thank you. Thanks. You. Uh, we'll be right back.